Hello fellow AGD coders, welcome to another bite-sized video and today I'm uh, making a video in response to a question by uh, Chris Flynn who asked on the Facebook page about uh, fixed jumps. So hi Chris, I hope you find this video useful. Uh, initially my response was that it was a fairly straightforward answer and um, all you had to do was just stop the player from being able to control the character when in the air. and uh, but it turned out to be a little more complicated than that so that's why I decided to make a video as you can see here we've got the standard AGD control where the player jumps and uh, you still have control of the movement of the player while in midair um, certainly not true to uh, real-world physics but uh, it can be quite a nice game mechanic in certain situations if you design your levels to suit that style however um, if you want to make something which is perhaps a little more authentic to say Manic Miner or you want to create a different challenge then you might want to make a fixed jump so um, I'm going to switch over here now to uh, a fixed jump code which I've created obviously I can't demo it especially well here because you can't see that I'm not pressing the keys but the first thing to think about then is um, when the player is static not pressing a key the uh, character should be able to jump up and down but not be able to move and the only time the player can actually move is when the uh, player is uh, pressing a key left or right and jump is pressed so basically what we have to do here is trigger a jump and uh, and also then take that into account the movement so that the player keeps moving across so before we look at that code let's take a look at some sort of typical standard AGD code here which is something you might already be familiar with so what we're doing here is we're taking the image into account we're checking if the player can move left or right and uh, and then basically we're just choosing jump and uh, telling the code that the player also needs to fall so there's nothing in the jump code really at all that uh, that allows or disallows the player any kind of control. He'll just jump and uh, the left and right keys will obviously affect that. So here I'm just showing you uh, the template for the Manic Miner style code and uh, as uh, Chris pointed out it isn't really Manic Miner style since uh, you you certainly can't do that in Manic Miner. You can't jump forward and back again in midair. So let's uh, take a quick look at the code uh, running we'll set this to sprite 2. The reason I'm doing this is just to show you that uh, if you want to test out a few different uh, control styles what you can do is basically early on in your development process uh, set uh, a few different scripts up in type 0, 1 and 2 and uh, just change your player sprite to each of them and uh, then you can tweak them and you can experiment with the uh, different ones and you don't have to sort of uh, lose one because you've edited it or, or whatever. You can basically settle on the one that you like, jump between them, try them out on different levels and, and so on. So as you can see here that was the um, that was, this, this was the standard code and uh, we've now moved over to uh, to using the code where there is a fixed jump. So as you can see here, I mean as I said already you can't really see that I'm what, what keys I'm pressing but uh, basically um, what's happening here is as I described the character can only uh, can only jump forward or backwards and you can't change it in the middle but of course um, at the same time when the player is standing still they will jump straight up in the air like that so those are the two things that we have to consider and um, so basically the main thing that we need to think about here in the code is the difference between when the player is in the air and when the player is on the ground because the only time that the player should be able to move left and right is when the player is actually on the ground. So we are going to have to uh, consider that first, if the player can go down or not. And when we look at the code, we'll see that's the, that's the main principle, the first thing that we uh, do. And uh, once we've uh, set up the player control, then we have to basically take over and uh, ensure that the jump, as it has been triggered, is then continued by the code rather than by the player. So basically the code is going to take over the jump if the player is moving right or left. 
So let's take a look at the code. As you can see here, this is the key to it. If can down, and I've got an else here. So I've got two different things happening. One, when the player is in the air, and the other, when the player is on the ground. So the else part here is the part where the player is on the ground here. And this is the part that looks very similar to the original code for moving left and right. But as you can see, we've got a few things here. First of all, we're using a variable direction. And uh, this will tell us whether the player has actually made a jump or not. And this is this part here. If key 4, I'm using key 4 to trigger a jump. I'm saying if the player is moving right, set direction to 1. If the player is moving left, set direction to 2 and then make a jump. And obviously if the player isn't moving left or right and is just standing still, then direction will still remain to be 0. And this is going to allow us to then uh, trigger an automatic jump, which will be controlled by the code rather than the player, in one of two directions, either one, number one, or number two. The second part, as you can see here, this is the standard control code for moving left and right. And that's the same as before. But the key to that is that it's inside this else statement. So in other words, those keys, in other words, the player control is only active when the sprite is on the ground when it can't go down so that's really the key to that first part there of the puzzle is to solve that part where you can't move when you're in the air but the second part of the puzzle is to make sure that the player moves but is controlled by the code when uh, when a jump has been triggered so uh, we'll uh, we'll have a look here now we'll move up and we'll uh, basically take a look at what these two variables here, what happens when we trigger these two uh, numbers, 1 and 2, in this uh, variable direction, which will be either left or right, or 0, which will mean no direction at all. So let's, uh, let's scroll up and take a look at the first part of the code. OK, so what we're doing here then is we're asking the question, is direction right? Yes, it is. And if so, can you move right? And if you can, then implement the, implement the image and move right. And if direction is 2, then that means that the player was pressing the left key, in which case we need to implement uh, the left image and we then need to move the sprite to the left. But again, all of this is happening only when the player is in the air. And as you'll see, because we've got this can down um, and then an else and then here let direction equals zero so in other words as soon as the player hits the ground then that trigger that jump must be stopped and we must hand control back over to the player straight away so um, basically that's the essence of the whole routine it basically tells AGD to let the player control the character when they are on the ground but to take over and run some different code when the player is in the air. And that different code will depend on the key, left or right, that the player pressed when they instigated the jump. And it will be either left or right, and that movement will then basically continue until the player hits the ground again. And as soon as the player hits the ground, then the code knows that it should hand control back to the player. So that's essentially what the whole routine does. Um, let the player control be com in complete control when walking on the ground, as you can see here. As soon as you press jump, take over. If the player is static, just do a simple jump straight up and down, but don't allow the player to move left or right in the air, like that. And then if the player is pressing right, jump right, just like that, as you can see. And um, it will allow the player to just kind of shuffle up a little bit onto a ledge, but I think that's fine. Um, and of course, if the player is moving left, it's the same principle, but in the other direction. So, yeah, essentially that, that's pretty much the code. It's fairly straightforward, but uh, I felt it was interesting enough to merit a video because uh, there was a little bit of extra code there that I uh, initially hadn't anticipated and I thought was quite interesting. And I thought you guys might enjoy seeing that as well. Okay, so there you go. That's how it's done. I hope you found that useful and interesting. As I said, um, it's a good idea to uh, to flick through, try different types of code. I'll, I'll make this demo available so that you can try the different uh, 
the different movement types there that I've shown. You can analyze the code, maybe have a play about with it, change it for yourself, and so on. That's really the best way to learn. So, uh, yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. As always, keep enjoying AGD, keep enjoying the Spectrum, and uh, happy coding. Take care. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.